Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This will be part 4 of Golden Fox. If you are liking this story, make sure you check out the author information in the description below. Also, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Now for the story. Jump City, 2 days later, 2.34 a.m. Small music store. Nothing stirred in the night, so no one would notice a little mouse. Except this mouse was a cloaked human, inside of a white cloak, laid purple eyes. They laid upon the many selections inside the store. The store had been closed earlier that night, but still the mouse wanted something. What he wanted, he'd get. Slowly he looked over the selections, looking for several good music discs. He finally found one in the form of Foo Fighters, which he pocketed. But this mouse had another little plan. He wanted something else, and soon he crawled his way to the back room. There he came upon the safe, and smirked under his mask. Bingo! He squeaked, and pointed his hand at the lock. Sand, coming out of a pouch he had, formed a key. He slowly manipulated it to slowly enter the lock, and harden it once it formed around it. He gave a twist with his palm, and slowly the lock came unhinged. The safe opened, and there he discovered a fair amount of cash. Around two hundred, maybe three. So he quickly reached in with the sand, pocketing it so his fingers could not be traced. His purple eyes started to change. What once purple, became a pale green. An indication of psionic activity. Slowly he got up, and started to head for the door. When he exited the building, he looked up, holding up the money, to which a pink-haired girl landed in front of him. Good job, Ironrin. You do us a good image. Since you passed your test, you can be in my group. The girl stated, and as they started walking away, the boy removed his hood, and showed red hair, and painted eyelids. Thank you, Jinx. I hope Father Blood will approve of me. Titan Tower, Basement, for colon zero zero A. M. Several clones fought Naruto, who was trying to pace his body faster. He had just got out of recovery, and back to training. Still weak need more power. Naruto exclaimed in head, taking a blow to the face by a clone. He grappled the said clone, broke its arm, before kicking in the back, making it disperse. Naruto felt another of his clone's feet clash into his side, which made him stumble. He quickly countered, and lowered onto his knee, allowing two clones to soar past him where he grabbed the third one by the neck and slammed him into the ground. He palmed that one in the face, making it disperse. Naruto Uzumaki was trying to mimic how Robin fought a week ago, his martial arts, which he did not have, nor any formal training in melee combat. The two other clones came back, working in sync to throw Naruto off. He could tell by their red eyes that Kurama was inside of them. Attempting to move faster, Naruto channeled chakra throughout his body to keep up. It was just barely enough. He managed to sweep a clone of its feet, but when he faced back around, the other clone had its knee ready to drive into the poor lad's already bruised face. He blocked the knee, only to get a kick in the gut from the fallen clone. Naruto. You need to act faster. Your reflexes are key. Do not forget the Kitsune way. Naruto nodded and jumped backwards, getting on all fours and raising up with his arms crisscrossed. The two clones formed more clones, some of them holding knives. We come. The Kurama-controlled clone said, charging at Naruto. The redhead managed to dodge the others by rolling to the side, and there he grabbed two knives laying on the ground. He reverse gripped them, managing to counter a slash from one of the other clones, dispersing it with a stab to the gut. Naruto rolled backwards, his shirt getting slashed by another clone. He stripped the torn fabric off and quickly threw a knife into the clone, before instinct started to take over, and he reached behind himself, intent on grabbing a clone's hair which he succeeded in doing, before he pulled down, making the clone smash its face in. He felt his eye change color, and looked around. He was surrounded his wounds already healing rapidly, he growled out loud. He charged at the other clones, dodging to the left as they each threw knives. The half-demon came to their backs, and slashed the middle on in the back of the neck. It dispersed immediately, allowing him to use its smoke to close the gap on the other two to the left. He slammed his palm into the first one, making him take flight in a short distance into the air, and when the other one tried to kick him, he grabbed it and slammed its body down into the ground. His eyes started to go black where the whites were. Slowly, he felt this power surging through him, only for him to suddenly feel a jolt of pain spread through him, snapping him out of it, which made him fall to his knees. We're done for today, Naruto. Please meditate to relax. The black inside of his skrella started to die down. The blonde did as ordered and slowly entered his meditative state. What? Come on, I just started to feel more powerful. Why did you just stop it? You were going to hurt yourself, 
handicap yourself with a lack of chakra. I recommend that you slowly back off for a moment. Because next week is your final week probation. We wouldn't just suddenly go off due to a lack of sleep and mess it up right. Right. So, is there anything I can do to pass the time? I almost got the Rizangan down pat. Just need some fine tuning you know. He he he. Well, if you should ask. When you get your chakra control up more, along with your reserves. I think elemental training will be in order. Wait, I can bend elements? Yes, kid. It's very unique too, but it wasn't rare from the time I came from. Many of my people could do it. In fact, it was rarer to not be able. I remember my older student now, his blonde hair swirling around from a shuriken wind he would create. Truly still burns me ire he turned down my deal. What deal? And a shuriken of wind? That sounds badass. That's another story for another time, kid. But in honesty, I can sense your soul, and unlike my former student, you do not possess a high affinity for just wind. You possess it for water, and fire as well. Affinity. Meaning your soul is more in tune to the music of that particular chakra. Eons ago, I too thought chakra was that to bend a master's will, but no, it has its own rhythm and music, like wavelengths. So, the different the wavelength, the different the element, right? Precisely, think of it as like a dancing motion, fire being rigid and strong, whereas water is free flowing and smooth. Earth in context is the opposite of both, unmoving, wind being free to move about and has no set pattern. Cool, so did your old student master them all? Yes, even lightning, which I forgot about, due to some rough history with that element. Oh, what history? Well, while I was teaching him, he got into a fight and got stabbed through the chest with a lightning technique. So is that how he died? Oh, gods, no, he didn't die that easily. That brat wouldn't roll over and die like some little human would. He was in our tongue, Psyche Raishu, the strongest lord. So he was the strongest of you? I thought you the lord of fox kin was the strongest, so wouldn't that make you his student? You idiot brat, I am the most powerful demon lord. I am not weaker than you think, and just because I was doesn't mean I didn't teach him. I taught him his most powerful jutsu. Amba wa sanani anata ga wadashi inai zutsu o adarutsu mori sakabo shinid kadasai. Karama please don't yell so much you're going to give me a headache. Gur, the only half demon I care for, and he makes such insult. He he, just like old times. Haha, ha, very funny, look old timer. I think I need to sleep now, so. I know, time to sleep. Near the border between Tennessee and Kentucky. 3 colon 23 p. M. A lone man walked along the path of a river, where he stopped to take a sip of water. He had red hair, with red face paint. He had no upper shirt, bearing his tanned flesh. He wore leather pants, and carried a bow with him. By him was the spirit of a wolf, along with the spirit of a hawk. He looked at them and smiled. Hello, forest spirits, how may I serve thee? The man bowed into the water. The spirits looked at him before nudging their heads for him to follow. The man got up and began to follow them. He used his walking stick to help him keep balance as he walked onto the steep hillside. He soon entered the cave where his ancient ancestors, the Akaki tribe, took hold of in the bids of survival during the old times. He entered the cave to see a man standing there, dressed inside a suit and tie. Hello, Waya, been a long time. The man said, turning to see the Native American tribesman. He had a long, sleek haircut and wore sunglasses. The Native American looked at him and frowned. Richard Valentine, I told you to never call upon me again, for you know that I shall never do your work again. The man nodded and then smiled. I haven't come here to ask for your help, but I came here to congratulate you on your efforts. My government is not too happy with your sabotage of this forest lands and even scaring away potential buyers. The man taking off his sunglasses, revealing a set of green eyes. The native smirked with pride and looked at the man. So what have you come seeking? For I have nothing to give to you, and never shall I use my powers in the name of this government again. Not after Ghost. His smirk went away at the mention of a friend he served with. I understand. Ghost was a bit unstable. So you had no choice. I actually came here to give you a heads up that the Young Justice League is looking for teachers. I offered your name and the main league sent me here. Wyatt nodded his head and motioned for the man to continue. Richard put his glasses back on and smiled. They want someone to teach survival and archery, along with hunting should they get sent to heavily forested area or get lost inside the said forest. I came here in good faith of the league, not in past friendships. The man nodded and looked at him in the eyes through the sunglasses. When do I need to leave? Richard nodded and motioned for him to follow. 
A large helicopter equipped with a cloaking device came into view. You can set out for Mount Justice in a few hours. Is there anything you need? The man nodded and put two fingers towards his mouth as he whistled and smiled as a woman wearing the same type of clothing, with of course having a top on came out of the bush. This is my wife, Sal Ali. She has been helping me since. Ghost. The man nodded and then beckoned them onto the helicopter. She took her husband's hands and then smiled. Richard then got a message over his earpiece. He frowned. Sorry, Waya. We're heading towards another place. Titan's Tower West, two hours later. Ops room. Robin was on the communication link with Bentley, who was yawning at the moment. So, Bentley, did you manage to relocate? The man on the other end just screamed into the headpiece Robin held. Hell yeah, I did. I'm in the space tower, bitches. I guess you could say this my next step to becoming the first cyber hero. Ha ha ha. My god, that is ridiculous. I see. Well, that's good to hear. So have you managed to crack into what I wanted? Actually, no. Strangely, Uzumaki Naruto records got screwed tighter than Miser's purse on the subject of charity. Meaning unless you walk your ass to Japan, there is no way of getting it. I see. Well, I guess I'll keep trying to see if I can reach out to any of my Japanese contacts. Maybe one of them works for the JDF now. So we'll have a mole. Something is not sitting right about the organization. Yumiami, I did a recent check. They had over 130 arrests of metahumans and such. Like they're rounding them up and putting them on the list where they either say join the league like Naruto or go to jail. Yeah, but why the sudden crackdown? I know Japan has a problem with metahuman criminals, but the brutality of their lockdown strategy seems a bit forceful. Then you're going to hate this part. The ones that they caught having no record, without useful powers were locked up. What? Yeah man, I known, something is off. They're listed under criminal, though I can't seem whom or what they are. Thanks Bentley on the update. Hey by the way did you enjoy the trip up? Screw you, seriously Robin, I hate jetting across space. Okay, okay calm down, calm down. Anyway I got to go. Sleepyhead just woke up. Okay Robin, listen though I sent this to Batman, he'll be discussing this with others tonight. Alright, bye. He shut off the communicator as a mop of red hair rounded the corner. He was yawning, with it a swallowing of a pill, which was meant to help with pain, since his ears had been damaged slightly in the last battle. Morning, bird boy, Naruto casually said, walking over to the fridge and popping open a can of cherry soda, which he slowly nursed and looked around. Hey, where is everyone? He asked, and Robin turned to him. They're out on missions right now, Starfire and Raven are taking the docks. Beast boy and Cyborg got the central city. We were supposed to stay here for a little bit, before heading out. Though it seems relatively clear for today. Robin said shrugging, Naruto nodded. Still nursing the soda. He sat in a chair, and leaned back. So how's your ears doing? They're in a hell of a lot of pain, but I'll live. Naruto responded, deciding to chug a little bit of the soda. I see. So tell me Naruto, do you think you'd be a good fit here? The boy looked at him, before shaking his head. Not really. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've calmed down, but my methods are more brutal than yours. In some ways you'll come to respect them, others you'll come to fear them. Robin chuckled slightly, before he pointed at Naruto. You remind too much of Logan, you know Wolverine from the Marvel comics. Naruto eyes widened slightly at the jibe, before he grumbled something about talking traffic lights. The two boys looked at each other for a moment, so any word on that pink-haired bitch? Yes, and no, we've tracked down their info with my contacts. But, as to their location, nope. Naruto lightly gripped the can harder. So what you're saying we can't find them? Robin nodded, before he saw Naruto roll his eyes. Perfect. The boy wonder, nudged him with his foot. Cheer up man, trust me, it's not like we win all the time. I mean, we have days. Though as for this ragtag team of villains, they do need to be stopped. Naruto nodded. Yeah, which is why I am not sitting around here. He said, before getting up. Jump City, near Central Courthouse, 6 colon 45 p.m. Dude this is so boring. Beast Boy shouted, walking with his best friend on patrol. The other man agreed with a nod, and as they walked they felt a sense that nothing was happening today. The duo team of knuckleheads kept walking around. Beast Boy then had hearts explode from his eyes, metaphorically of course, when they came around a corner to see two hot girls walking down the street. Beast Boy. Cyborg began and Beast Boy had the biggest blush possible for a guy. Oh yeah, screw this. I'm a gonna get me a date, and head to the movies. Cyborg nodded, and decided to walk with him. 
He watched as B.B. sleeked his hair backwards and headed into an alleyway, where he took off his costume and revealed clothing he had underneath. A messed up t-shirt, but it was common for many of the hunks to wear it with black jeans. Cyborg looked at him as if he had grown a second head. Dude, when do you ever wear other clothing? The boy looked at him smirking. Well, I always keep a pair on hand, but I never seen a reason until now. He purred as the girls passed the alleyway and looked at his friend. Okay, let's play it cool. The changeling said, and they walked out of the alleyway. Cyborg decided to put on his hat, which was a Red Sox's baseball cap. Though as far as anything else, he really didn't have clothing except his armor. The duo of teenage hormone-driven boys came up to the girls. How's it going, sweetie? Beast Boy said to a girl with dark brown hair and a light tan. She turned around. She had a pair of beautiful brown eyes. Whoa, it's a titan. The girl said. They looked at the changeling with similar looks they had given them. The changeling wiggled his eyes brow slightly before he offered his hand out. Want to hang out for a little bit? The boy slightly quipped. They looked at each other before nodding. Beast Boy had a little chibi of himself dancing around. Well, that had to all change now, didn't it? No sooner than the girls said yes, gunshots were heard. The duo looked at each other with similar looks. You've got to be pulling my leg here. Beast Boy whined and then morphed into a cheetah, which started to run. Cyborg started to move, but then he turned around. Could we perhaps get your numbers? He said. The girls shrugged and started to write down on a piece of paper their cell numbers, and the Titan Metal Man just snatched them while waving goodbye. Still got a chance, he said, before using his jet pack. Near the gunshots, Naruto was already above a building overlooking the escape vehicle. The man each held pistols. The driver started the car as they entered the back, bags full of a hard-earned money. The redhead glared slightly and looked towards his side. You got an explosive? Naruto asked, and Robin nodded. The boy wonder waited for them to be fully entered before he threw a birdarang with an explosive mod attached to it. The said birdarang then exploded, making the vehicle useless. Naruto jumped down and used his momentum to crash through the windshield, where he used his tail to choke the driver out. The two other men came running out of the truck, only for one of them to get hit by electrified birdarangs, which made him pass out on the spot. The last man glared at Robin and brought his gun up, only for a knife to come sailing into his hand, making him drop the firearm. Naruto slowly walked out of the driver's side vehicle, dragging the man he had encompassed with his tail. He was screaming help. Along the way, Naruto came to a stop by the man who was holding his bloody hand, and he looked at Naruto. Our master is not going to take this lightly, demon. The boy smirked. Now the man had truly screwed up. He watched as the man grabbed the knife and tried to stab him. The redhead deflected the knife strike and grabbed the man's arm. Robin decided to look away before he heard a snap followed by a scream. You just messed up. Naruto muttered, before dropping the man that was inside the coils of his tail. The man watched as the tail came up. Tell me who's your master? Naruto asked, but the audible clap a large round firing weapon sounded throughout the block. Making many civilians run, Naruto looked towards the directing. Seeing an orange mast, who was holding a rifle? A bear at point five zero cal. The redhead looked down to the man he was about to ask, and found his brain matter scattered across the ground. Naruto looked back up to see the man gone, and started to make a pursuit. Only hear a beeping noise, it was coming from the man's dead body. What the heck? His eyes suddenly opened, and he moved to grab Robin. Only to picked up by a green cheetah, and he watched as Robin got picked up by a jet-packing cyborg. The bomb went off, taking out the street, but luckily all the civilians were gone from the area, but still the destruction was widespread. The team landed on a building, and they looked at the destruction. What the hell was that Naruto? Did you kill him? The redhead looked at Cyborg. The man's blood was all over him. Feeling his nose, making it hard to keep focus. No. Someone shot him. A sniper. He had on an orange mask. The boy wonder's eyes widened considerably, and he defiantly needed to contact Batman about this. The redhead looked down at the ground, and then came to one conclusion. Someone trying to trap us, and it's not exactly a all take alive either. Titan's Tower, Ops Room, for PM, two days later. So it would seem Slade Wilson is not as dead as once was thought. The Batman analyzed from the information over the computer screen. Robin nodded and motioned for Naruto come up. He was wearing a red shirt and black pants, an unusually pleasing combination for once. Naruto then threw down an artist's sketch of what he saw. Surprisingly, he was good at art. I saw him hanging out on the buildings above. 
he had a clean shot, but strangely he took out the man that I was about to ask nicely where his boss was. Batman nodded at this over the computer screen. That's the fine MO of Deathstroke. He probably hired the men to be his criminal underlings. If he wanted to cover his tracks, what better way to then to kill all assisting him? Then start from scratch. Batman explained. He then looked at Naruto. The boy looked back up at him. They shared a pregnant pause before Batman frowned. You would think a kid like you coming close to death, and yet you act like nothing has happened at all. The redhead shrugged and then smirked. Death is association part of Shinobi. We are breeders of it and master over its instruments. It's only natural that we die at some point, good or evil. Question is, how do you want go out? Batman nodded at this, but then sighed. Listen Uzumaki Naruto, if you want we could send you to Young Justice. They hold a bit more of the front line jobs there. You wouldn't be in trouble either, since there are others that have similar methods. Naruto shook his head. Sorry, I think I'm fine where I am. Besides if that was the case, I'd probably kill them. Batman nodded, and then looked towards Robin with concern. Robin, I need you to keep a set eyes always to your back, and Sky. You never know what Wilson may do since he has saw you. Remember that he is a lead assassin. The boy nodded, and confirmed before shutting off the computer. Naruto scoffed at the idea, so an elite assassin in town sounds like big boy work, thinking we'd stay out of it. Robin nodded, making Naruto shake his head, lightly cussing into the air, before he smiled back down. I like his style, by the way. Robin snapped his head towards Naruto, who was holding the picture. He left no identifiable features to see, only the mask, and that could be replaced. Chances were if he was supervillain then it held meaning, so he wouldn't dare. The boy wonder looked at his teammate at the moment, with stunned-like expressions. You like his style? He's a mask killer Naruto, can you like it? Naruto nodded, understanding why Robin would be upset, and then turned. Think about it. We've got no way of tracing him. All of the people we had captured are dead. Because, the bullet had a M message, minor size high explosive in it. Advanced tech. Probably homemade as well. After all, that's what you said after observing. The boy wonder nodded, remembering what he had said. Naruto had a knife in his hand, before slamming it down on the picture and through the wooden table. Doesn't change the fact he's a dead man walking. Cause when we find him, either way it goes down. We'll either kill him, or we'll be sending him to the death row. Robin looked at Naruto who had a long look of hatred in his eyes. Naruto, are you planning to kill him? The boy looked at his leader and shrugged. I don't know, if he decided to draw a gun on me, I guess it's fair game. The redhead replied, before removing the knife. You know we don't allow killing Naruto, even if it's self-defense, the half-demon looked at his leader, before closing his eyes. Then you had better be there to stop me. He watched as Naruto got up to leave, before being stopped by Raven. The older half-demon looked at him, we need to talk. She said, the blonde looked at her, then chuckled, which he then motioned for her to follow him. The leotard-adorned girl came into the kitchen, where she watched Naruto get out a cherry soda. So princess of our kind, what is it that you want to talk about? Naruto asked, before the cola turned black, getting thrown into the trash can. He looked at an angry raven, who was slightly pissed at being called princess. The redhead wasn't pleased by it. So what's got your panties in a bunch? The purple-haired half-demon removed her hood and allowed her face to be revealed to him. The redhead just looked at her weird. Um, what's wrong with you? The girl eyes glowed white before an aura surrounded Naruto. He looked at it before looking as her eyes turned back to normal. Your aura is becoming mixed. I recommend you meditate more. Was her only thing, before she started walking away. Only to feel a hand stop her. What do you want? Naruto was looking at her as she turned around to face. I wanted to say I was sorry, if I just pissed you off, but why do I need meditate? Especially more. The girl looked at him, before she sighed. You have emoticlones, clones of your emotions. I suggest deep mediation. You'll meet them there. The boy looked at her and just nodded. Why do you want to help? Especially since I still don't like you very much. The half-demon princess, as Naruto dubbed, shrugged. Because, you need it. And it's actually nice to see another of my kind. Do you know anything of your heritage, like your parents? The redhead shook his head. Well, I'll level with. I was the byproduct of a deal, and a broken deal. My mother was to be queen besides a demon lord, but he betrayed her, and extension me. Naruto nodded. She then looked around. Listen, meet me in your room at 12 tonight. I'll talk to you some more. Maybe help you with your emoticlones. The redhead nodded, and there agreed to meet her. She put her hood back up, and turned around to tap him on the shoulder. 
He looked back at her. You should prepare to confront inner demons. Titan Tower, Engineering Suite, one hour later. Beast Boy and Cyborg were busy working on some new mods for the various equipment inside the base. Dude, you're going to electrify Robin's staff. BB asked the metallic man, who was busy working on the T-car. Yeah man, give him an edge, since many of us are vulnerable to electricity. That way if goes against someone like the mammoth guy, he'll get a leg up in the fight. The changeling watched as the elevator raised up to reveal Naruto. You dude we got company. Cyborg slid from under the car and looked. The half-demon exited the elevator and walked towards them. They saw him sit down in front of the car as if he was marveling the thing. Cyborg looked at him. So dude what brings you here? Naruto looked down and then brought out a scroll, where he slammed his hand into it, revealing a quiver of arrows. The man of metal just looked at it, before frowning. I was wondering if I could get some mods to my arrows. I know I haven't used them in a mission yet. But, if this guy we're going against can hit from long range, I'm going to need something to fight back with. The tin man nodded and looked at them. You have titanium tips on these, so they're already armor piercing to most armor. What would you like done? Naruto smiled and brought up a drawing he held. It was a samurai holding a bow with some type of lightning arching off of it. Naruto watched as the duo smiled at his ability to draw. I want to model my bow after Rai, the lightning archer. If I can get electrified arrows, then I could possibly stun the guy we're hunting. Cyborg nodded and took the quiver. Then the blonde noticed something. Beast Boy was texting on a phone. Hey, Beast Boy, who are you talking to? The boy stopped before blushed, and Cyborg sort of quickly went back under the car. The changeling smirked. A hot girl we met today on patrol. Oh man, you should have seen her, Naruto. You'd had your cold heart melt in a second. Naruto's right eye twitched before he sighed. Then he smirked and then asked a question. Can I see a picture? The changeling nodded and brought a rather clean picture for Naruto to see. The young redhead took a look at it before shrugging. She's not that hot. Cyborg came back from under the car. The hell? You kidding me? She's a damn vixen. That girl and I are going a date with Beast Boy and her friend. The red-headed half-demon just sighed before sitting down, staring out into the sun through the window. They took notice of this. You miss home, don't you? Naruto gave them a hand wave of 50-50, meaning he was at odds about it. It's not really my home anymore, you know, it was with her, but not now. I don't really have a home, well aside from laying low here for a little bit. Beast Boy came to sit by him and patted his shoulder. Don't sweat it, bro. I mean, you had it rough. Nowhere will feel like home until you can feel it in your heart. Naruto nodded and looked deeper into the sun. My wanting is to go to Yamana. The two partners looked at the boy confused. Did there is no country named Yamana? Where is it? Cyborg asked, running scans on the word in the list of countries. It's the fox can home, a spiritual plane, Karama won't let me. Saying I'm not strong enough. Beast Boy got confused. Who's Karama? The changeling asked. Naruto looked at him before getting up. The blonde sat facing them and took of his shirt. He took a very deep breath and allowed chakra to flow towards his stomach. Where a seal appeared, it was triangle in shape with nine tomos surrounding it. They span around, as if orbiting the object. Dude, what is that? Beast Boy said moving back a little. It looked like a small hole in Naruto's stomach. This is called Chijo no Shingakusha no Inken, the seal of earthly divines. It's a very ancient Kitsune Shinzoku, fox kin, technique. Said to seal the spirit of the governing fox lord inside a willing human host. Apparently Kurama, the lord of all Kitsune wanted me. Naruto drawled out, feeling tired from putting chakra into the seal. Beast Boy noticed it slowed in its rotation, dude. That is epic. It's not so epic. I mean, I can't really use Karama. My body would die before I could release him to fight alongside me. Naruto explained. The duo nodded, and Cyborg spoke up. So how would you get to Yamana? The redhead looked at his seal, and focused more chakra into it. If I had enough power, I could open the seal, and be inside Yamana. Where Karama said he'll train me himself. Though isn't he already training you? I mean you know how to does weird techniques. Naruto chuckled, deciding he'd school them a little bit. Chakra is life-governing energy, combination of physical energy and spiritual energy. It's not so weird. It's similar to the Buddhist beliefs regarding energy and such. That it's ever flowing, in fact, beast boy. You have chakra, just you've never learned to use it. The green teen eyes widened. He imagined being able to use Naruto's clones. He then spoke up about it. Dude, can you teach me to unlock the chakra thingy then? He was disappointed when Naruto shook his head no. 
This meant two things to BB, that he didn't want to train him, or he didn't know how. Luckily, the next line set his heart at ease. I don't know how. I unlocked mine subconsciously, during, well, you know, I used it to heal me enough to run away, and ever since I've just been building enough to finally activate the seal to Yamana. The duo nodded and watched as he nearly passed out, forgetting to turn off chakra to the area. Beast Boy then brought up another question, how much chakra would it take for you to activate it? Naruto shrugged, having never asked the question himself. Though he figured something out, if Kitsune had multiple tails. Maybe their tails symbolized the amount of chakra they had. I think if I grew my second tail, I may just have enough, but brutal training seems to not gotten me anywhere near what I need. Beast Boy nodded, and looked towards Cyborg. Tell you what, I'll see what we can do about that end. If we got nothing tomorrow, I'll ask you to be here in the morning, and we'll do a battery of tests on your system, to see if we can come up with a way to get your second tail. Naruto eyes brightened slightly. You'd do that for me? The duo nodded and smiled. Of course, bro. I mean, you sure you were an ass. You had a reason, though, and I'll admit I was at first myself. But, you just need some love, and you'll turn around. Naruto smiled, and this one was true smile. Thank you. That means a lot. The duo failed to notice a lone tear fall from his eye. Jump City, 8 p.m. Near Mall. Naruto decided that hanging around Titan Tower all day was going to be too much of hassle on his nerves. So he put on a coat and made his way towards Jump City. The teen easily hid his tail under the leather coat he was wearing. Something of a gift from Robin, who stated, You need to wear something better. The young half-demon almost took offense before he got a look at it. Which was awesome to say the least, it was warm to on this cold night. It actually was from Bird Boy's own clothing rack, since it had a picture of a robin onto the back of it. The redhead just smirked as passed under streetlights. The cold minus the snow reminded him of Japan, at least for the bitter moments. Snow, to him, was always an enigma. He loved it so much, but in the essence he likened it to purity. Something he very well didn't have. Like he had said before, his innocence was washed away by blood, and sure he was calmed down now making the Titans his friends in the sense of comrades. Though, in his heart, he knew he still had a mission to complete. He still had a purpose to fulfill. This lonely walk made him remember the bitter moments inside the cold. How people scoffed at him when he begged for food. How people treated him like a monster. In a way, he could have become a monster. Maybe in all rights he should be one. The way he fights, it's like an animal. He speaks a demonic language. If he hadn't been what Karama called Chance who Chance. Then he'd probably let him do what he wanted. He closed his eyes. Kitsune, run, Kitsune. I was so scared. Monster, get away, shoo, you'll bring us bad luck. I was so angry. There is nothing here to help. Please, child, find another place to rest. All those who worshipped a so-called holy god turned me away. You killed my luck, brat. Isarabi, she was the one that took me in. Watch, boy. I was forced to watch, as her life was taken away. Is this? B-L-O? Isarabi. I can remember shouting out. It's all good, bro. They made me cry my first tears of joy in years. You need to stop being so rude. They were right. I was rude. He felt someone bump against him, and he looked to see a girl with cat-like eyes walking past him. Her hair was covered by a hoodie. Much like his, he noticed she had dropped something. A bracelet. He picked it up and smiled. To the best sister ever, Isabella. Naruto picked it up and walked over to the grill. Tapping her shoulder, she turned to face him. Her eyes slightly widened, but he didn't notice it. He looked familiar. Miss you drop this, Naruto said holding out the bracelet. The girl nodded, and took the object out of his hand. Thank you. Um. She started, trying to think. He was actually handsome inside the jacket. It's Naruto, miss. Hey, what are you doing out here alone? The girl quipped slightly, unsure what to say. Well, I'm just walking around. I'm enjoying my day off from work. Naruto nodded and turned to walk away. The girl then noticed something, a piece of red fur sticking out of his pants in the back. He rounded the corner, muttering something about sense. Her eyes widened before she muttered, crap, Titan. Of course she had waited for him to leave before saying it. Only he picked it up what she said somehow and came dashing around the corner. Her eyes widened and she began to run. Get back here, you hexing bitch. Naruto shouted now recognizing the scent and her cat-like eyes. The girl, now recognized as Jinx, made a speed dash through an alley. She managed to jump over the chain-link fence and smiled thinking she got away, only to hear the sounds of feet quickly catching up to her 
and she looked to see him running on the side of a building's wall. Go away, you furry bastard, she yelled, flicking him off. The boy swiftly jumped towards her. She rolled forward, avoiding him. Not so tough without your team having your ass, aren't you? Naruto shouted, his irises turning red. She backed away, before smirking as her eyes turned pink. She watched as he looked aside, and a piece of piping broke off the side of a building. She thought she had him, only to see catch it. You've got to be kidding me. He heard her mutter, and watched as he sliced it with his claws. He watched as she began to run again. Naruto's right eye twitched. God damn it. He said, before giving chase again. This time he was led into a high traffic area, where there was a massive amount of vehicles going for their nightly shifts at work. He watched as she nimbly avoided the cars. He however was dashing past them, jumping over them, and such. He was near her when she made a sudden turn towards the right, and Naruto saw why. Crap. He yelled, jumping a long bed truck. Well, most it. He ran on the last part, and saw her dashing into another alleyway, deciding that he wasn't going to lose this time. The boy bit into his hand, and smirked as blood came down. He formed the hand seals as he jumped off the truck, and slammed his into the ground on landing. Kitsuaki carry. Blood hunt. The trio of foxes appeared, with the green-furred three-tailed fox in the lead of them. They knew damn well what they needed to do, and started chasing the fleeing sin immediately. Naruto followed behind Claw, who was picking up the most scent, and in his spiritual vision Naruto could see the other two taking separate converging routes onto the target. The half-demon and demon foxes quickly caught up to her. He watched as she used various objects to ascend skillfully up a building. The hexmaker looked down below and smirked. She turned to run, to only get tackled by two black-furred foxes, which knocked her off the building. Naruto had a moment to contemplate, and moved to catch her. This proved to be a mistake as she easily corrected herself, and threw off the foxes, landing onto him, with a hard curb stomp on his chest. She tried to reach for something in her belt, a communicator, only for the redhead to grab it out of her hands. He broke, and grabbed her ankle with his tail, and sent down onto the ground. He crawled on top of her, and his clawed hand to her throat. Don't you friggin' move. He shouted. She looked at him defiantly. She spat onto his face and moved his other hand to wipe it off. He glared hard, letting out a guttural growl before using his tail to coil around her as he got up. She felt the tail squeeze hard, and he smiled sitting down cross-legged. Now, you've been hunted. How does that feel? Huh? Naruto screamed, his irises going back to their blue color. Her hood came off, revealing curled down pink hair. The redhead sort of looked away, only to feel her hand curl around his tail. Squeezing. That isn't going Tiga Ahara. Naruto screamed out in pain as a jolt of energy went through his body, making him shake slightly. Coughing up a massive amount sick, which landed on his boots. Bitch. He screamed, his tail unraveling. She got up, and cocked her fist back, starting to punch him in his face. I'm not a female dog asshole. She screamed. She got up, and kicked him once in the gut for good measure. Naruto growled, and spun getting up, using his paralyzed tail as a club to once again sweep her off the ground. He got back on top, and this time held her hands down. Do it again now? He shouted, she struggled, but then gave a frustrated sigh as her efforts became vain. Get the heck off of me. She ordered. Naruto just laid there on top of her, holding her down. Not a chance, lady. You've already beat me up twice. This time, I win. She growled at him, before trying to send jolts of energy to her hands. I'll make this ground collapse below us. Naruto held on tighter, making her wrist strain. She bit her lip, trying to keep from screaming. I don't think so. He growled and got up, holding fast as he swiftly got a piece of wire out and tied her hands. She tried to run, but he managed to trip her and tie her legs. Nice try. Naruto smirked and then smiled. Finally got my third super. Took a little bit though. Naruto spoke to himself out loud. That's when he heard a loud footsteps and looked to see the red-headed man from her team. No. He began, before the man charged him. Naruto managed to grab his fist as he began to try and use his momentum to punch the small teen in front of him. The half-demon quickly spanned around the large man, kicking him in the back as he scurried away from the girl. He watched as Gizmo quickly swooped in, grabbing her. The boy roared out in a rage and turned to only get punched into a building by Mammoth. He slid off his impression inside the building. The large man charged at Naruto. If he connected, then he'd probably kill the half-demon. Naruto closed his eyes and focused, trying to gather chakra into his hands. You need to use it now. 
Naruto heard the fox and cupped his hands together as a small ball of light formed inside of it. He moved it to his right hand and quickly dodged a punch from the man. He slammed the ball of light blue light into the man's stomach. Instead of exploding, it started grinding. Gah! Mammoth shouted in pain, the ball of light pushing more against his hard exterior. Naruto yelled out as he pushed. The man began to spit up a small amount of blood. Rasengan! Naruto shouted, before the man was blown back, spinning into a building, leaving his own impression. As well as knocking him out, Naruto fell to a knee and smirked. Finally having gotten the ancient technique, Gizmo glared at him, before he watched as the other two cronies came around the corner, grabbing Mammoth and began to use their unnatural speed to run away. Naruto finally roared out in victory and smiled. I won. Titan's Tower, 9.34 p.m. Ops Room. So you're saying you took on the group of villains and won out? Dude, the hell? The Beast Boy reprimanded, now mad that the half-demon would do something so rash. Naruto just rolled his eyes, but brought out a torn piece of the leather coat. Robin Wright I visibly twitched, I managed to finally learn the Rasengan, and I used it on the big guy. I have some of his blood on here, we can trace it. Right, right? Naruto reasoned, excited like a child over the use of the Rasengan. Yeah, but you didn't have tear up my leather. Robin muttered, oh well. I'll send the piece to Wayne Enterprise's scientist. They may be able to trace the blood to someone, or something. I don't need to tell you that we're impressed, Naruto. The boy wonder said, looking away. He was slightly jealous. Yes, this is a joyous day. Let us celebrate Naruto's victory. Naruto raised his right hand up, motioning for her to stop. She looked confused, but the slightly younger redhead finally stated why he wanted for her to stop. He then said something, which even made Robin agree. It's a not victory if they get away. But now I know two things about them. The big guy's blood we have, but the pink-haired witch names Isabella. Robin smirked, and then started running his on the computer, typing down the evidence Naruto had brought in. The thing that still troubled the boy, and still troubled the teens in the room. There had only one name, Deathstroke. Were they connected, the villainous five dubbed by Cyborg since they didn't have a name, and the assassin of legends. Someone who even the League of Shadows Ra's al Ghul fears. The red-headed teen boy just slouched down in the couch and relaxed, his cuts having healed along with his injuries, though he wouldn't have the chakra for a clone at this time, after all. The teen had made the error of forcing his chakra system into a joint healing and combat status, something the QB no Kitsune Kurama would bicker about later on. After all, his demonic energy use was being more of an addiction to the teen, it felt good to have his demonic chakra out and flaring. Though only in combat, the teen got up and stretched. He looked about, hey guys where is Raven at? She wanted to see me tonight. Beast Boy took notice almost instantly, but before he could say interrupted him. She's currently in her room, saying she is doing the studying. I've been asked to tell Nabi the disturbed. Naruto nodded and looked towards Beast Boy, walking over to him. He motioned for the boy to follow. Hey Beast Boy, wanted to see something cool? Naruto's room, basement of Titan's Tower. Thirty minutes later. Dude, you made this. Holy crap you are epic in art. Naruto smirked as Beast Boy observed his piece of art. It was of the graffiti style. The object that the changeling was so admiring was a painting of the Riverland in Japan. It was actually highly detailed for just graffiti. Beast Boy turned to him and said, You have to show the others. Naruto shook his head before smiling. This was becoming a very good hubby of his. He had done painting slash hate messaging for years. Over the month though, with the Titans, he had become calmer. Since he has people to vent to. Nah man, it's not finished. It's missing someone in it. Naruto watched as Beast Boy looked at him. Someone? He asked, now curious. Yeah, it's missing a portrait of my mother Aisarabi. She'd be right in the blank spot, by the house. She always wanted to live away from the heart of the city, you know? BB patted his right shoulder, and they sat there. You know Naruto, this highly detailed bro, so where is your brush? Naruto pointed towards his tail, and smiled. I may not bathe much, like I should, but my tail is the only thing I'll routinely take care of. It's my identity as a kitsune. Something Isarabi told me to take pride in, that I was unique, not in the bad way either. Beast Boy nodded and understood. Since he was after all, green. Green being what his mother called the life color in some cultures. The air hanged around for a few minutes, no one saying anything, and the orchestra music played slowly. Naruto looked towards his friend at the moment. So Garfield, why did you keep trying? I mean, don't get me wrong, I still have some anger issues. 
Why push through them and try to help me, even when I didn't want it? The green changeling smiled and looked at him. Well, sometimes the kick in the ass you need is not always the one you want. Though sometimes, having a moment to yell and get it all out helps a lot as well. So, I wanted you to yell. Now as for the food, I'd saved if you decided to do that. I mean, come on, that was good stuff, bro. Naruto chuckled at that and looked at the painting. He based it so much off his old life, the one he felt he was meant to live. It had the forest just right outside the city, the rivers, and the cabin Isarabi wanted. Except it had no Isarabi, no mother, no one else in the picture. Hey man, on a personal note, what do you feel for Raven? Beast Boy asked, curious slash concerned that the only other half-demon may have faked being angry at her. Naruto looked at him and shrugged. I don't hate her as much, but the way she acts all gloomy. I mean, come on, she needs to stop that. She had a good life, for the most part. If there was one thing I could say I do like, it's her powers. I mean, I'd love to do that. Beast Boy nodded. Yeah, she's pretty amazing. He drawled out, thinking about her. Naruto caught on to it, though. You like her, don't you? He teased. Beast Boy turned beat purple and turned to Naruto. What? No, that's stupid. That's stupid, bro. Naruto smirked and extended his fist out. BB looked at him as if he had grown a second head. The changeling then met Naruto's fist with his own, your secrets are safe with me, bro. Naruto said, before quickly withdrawing his hand. Beast Boy felt like he had just been at the highest mountain of pride. Yeah, and anything you tell me is a secret. Beast Boy offered as well. Naruto smiled, and then he looked towards the blank spot on the wall. Mother, would you be happy, right now? He asked himself, and then found himself starting to cry. Beast Boy watched this, and brought the dyed redhead closer to him. Yeah, bud. Did you ever have time mourn her? Naruto shook his head. He was too busy trying to survive. He didn't have the time. Beast Boy nodded, and he came up with a plan. Though he would have to get everyone on board, before he could give it the go-ahead. So Naruto, why don't you tell me what she was like? Naruto looked at him, and nodded. She was like the most delicate flower. Beautiful. Pretty is what I used to say. She was sweet, with the most gazing brown eyes you could ever ask for. Where others shunned me because of the way I looked, she opened her heart to me. I was just too weak to save her. Beast Boy shook his head and lightly batted Naruto on the back of the head. You were a child, bro. I couldn't save my parents, and I did actually have powers. I was six when they told me to run. Maybe. You know if I could have transformed to something else, I could still be Garfield Logan, not Beast Boy. Naruto looked at him and chuckled though still crying. You don't really like that name, do you? Beast Boy nodded and smirked. Well, you see it started as a joke from my dad. After he found I could transform, he nicknamed Beast Boy, Beastie Boy. You know after the band, I actually got annoyed by it. But, I learned to deal with it. Naruto nodded and smiled. She used to call me her little fox because of my whisker marks and my tail. She used to brush it like I was dog and in a way, it felt awesome. Beast Boy looked at him. We've got a lots of things in common, so in the few days after probation, you'll be getting my vote. Naruto looked at him, before shaking his head. The green changeling frowned at the sudden disapproval of the vote to make him a titan. Naruto then decided to level with him. I was hoping to go back to Japan, or possibly China after probation. I need to explore some things more about who I am, or what I am. Beast Boy nodded, and then smiled the most toothy smile he could give. The changeling frowned slightly his beast-like ears lowering, but then he perked up. So is there a girl you like here? Naruto put his hand to his chin and shrugged. Depends. Are we talking personality? Body. What? Beast Boy blushed slightly and smiled lecherously at Naruto, who was confused. Well, like, I don't know. Me, I like Raven because she's a hoe badass chick. Hell, under the gloomy gloom, death stares, she's a really nice girl. Naruto nodded and then spoke up. None. Beast Boy almost blanched at this statement. Oh, come on, not even Starfire, the Tamaranian warrior princess with a good clean heart. I mean, don't get me wrong. She's not for me, but seriously? Not even her. Naruto lightly chuckled before he looked down. You know what? I do like her personality. It's just, I don't know. She reminds me more of Aisarabi and the last time I checked Kitsune mate for life, just not to their mothers. Beast Boy almost blanched again, mating. Was he serious? Mentally screamed. Whoa, whoa, hold up. I didn't say mate with them, man. I mean, like dating. Naruto blinked his eyes in confusion. Oh God, that fox spirit inside of you is a pervert, isn't he? 
The redhead's eyes lightly widened, and he smiled like a nervous wreck. You were damn right I am. I mean, seriously. Got to have something fun when it's hard being an immortal spirit. Sheesh, times have truly changed. What has changed? I mean, was everyone perverted at some point? You have no idea. Before I taught my student and your ancestor. He had a teacher named the Toad Sage, and that man wrote perverted novels for a living. I have to say for the poor, writing. It was, humph humph. Detailed. Oh dear elemental gods, no. Oh dear gods, yes. You'd get blue bald for being sealed inside a human being for a round. I don't know. 200 years. Wait, I'm 200 years old? No dumbass. Your ancestor lived to that age, and during that time he united the world under his banner. A banner of fire. So war. No, no, you see he was once born in the old earth, where he was able to use his powers to unite the continents into once was known as in our tongue Unitedo Tochi, United Lands. Was he some sort of god? Yes and no. When he developed his powers to their fullest potential around the age of 70, he was so powerful that all wars came to an end to simply appease him. He was in a sense a mortal god, but alas he did not want immortality. Then my predecessor was idiotic. No. No, he was not. He wanted to finally tear away from the mortal coil as I alas cannot. I seen him fight and fight against the tides of death. He welcomed it after he left behind successors to his will. The will of fire? Yes, the will of fire. It's the burning soul desire. It drives you to do what you think is impossible under your nindo, which you cannot take up yet. Since you've not entered Yamana. I see. Tell? What did he look like my age? He had the same looks, minus the tail, and dyed hair. Eh, hey, I don't like my blonde hair. You know, that he wanted red hair, like his mother? Really? Then did he ever dye it? After the wars, yes, he dyed his hair. See then, you're still dealing with the same person Karama. In a way, I hope so, Kit. Kit? Beast Boy was looking at Naruto, who looked as if he had fallen asleep. He smiled, patting him once on the back, and smiled. Sorry, bro, if I fried your brain. The changeling chuckled out, and then as he neared the elevator he turned around. He noticed Naruto snoring. You know what, about Japan, I think I could arrange that. Inside Naruto's mind, 12.01 a.m. Naruto POV. The river, it runs clean here. I stood on a small pole, one foot keeping me balanced. I couldn't break this now. I accidentally fell asleep while talking to Kurama. Man, I hope I didn't screw up the moment. I mean, seriously, I feel good for once, and then I probably messed it up. Meh goes the nature of the beast I guess. I don't know where this feeling is coming from, but it's awesome. I look at this forest paradise, I must truly for once be dreaming. Well, that was until I saw a black portal open. Raven stepped out and crossed her arms. You were supposed to stay awake. She drawled at me. I just smiled and waved at her, which made her look at me strangely, and then I jumped off the pole, landing in front of her. Raven had the look of confusion on her face, and I took notice. Hey Ray, are you okay? The girl looked at me and gave me one simple, confusing order. Take me to your emoticlones, she said, and I just turned my head like a confused dog. I haven't made any clones, Ray. See, I'm by myself. What are emoticlones? I say as I looked around, making sure I haven't made clones. Don't play dumb with me. You are a half-demon? You must have met them? I was even more confused by now. Met who? Is there someone else here besides Karama? I asked, and then felt the ground shake. I watched as Raven adorned a look of pure shock and awe on her face. My fox spirit master, Karama, came into the clearing. His grand nine tails, dull red waving around. His red eyes looked over the clearing. Kit, you fell asleep? The giant fox said and looked down at me. Hey, Karama, what you doing, big guy? Hey, we got a visitor. Don't know how, but it's Ray Ray. I shouted to him before throwing my hands up with the Ray Ray part. The fox just looked at me, lightly confused for some reason. He then glared at the girl. What brings you into the kid's mind, young half-demon? The girl looked at him. I could feel the tension growing in the air between them. I wondered why. That's when Raven spoke up. I'm here to give him counsel on his emotions, and you know damn well what I mean. The my master growled angrily at my friend. So I stepped in to protect her. Hey, don't you growl, man. Come on. We ought to be happy. It's not looking weird with just a boy and a kitsune man here. I joked. I just watched as he looked slightly away before looking down at Raven again. Leave. Raven, however, I watch, stay her ground. No, you have been hiding them from him, so you hoped you'd never him see choose the wrong one to follow. 
The fox almost was ready to lunge at her, but I drew my hands up, standing between them. Stop fighting, holy crap. I swear I can't go one day without a mishap in the real world. I need some peace and quiet. I shouted, causing both of them to look at me. I felt a cold breeze enter the air, and soon the forest started to shift, until it was becoming darker, more dead, like my dream. What the hell? I muttered, looking at the dead forest nightmare. I noticed Karama's eyes glare in a particular direction. I watched as a black hair clone of mine came into view. His eyes were black with red irises. Hey, when did I form you? Why do you look so weird? The black-haired clone just smirked, and then I noticed key features. I see that the original finally has a chance to meet us. Well me, and I'm all he'll ever need. Shame Lord Nine Tails. So focused on the little girl and not blocking me out. Oh well, even if I don't have a string, I guess the original is the much bigger price. I looked confused. Why did my clone have a demonic tone of voice? I only got that when I was consumed in rage. I watched as he began to walk. Then I took notice of something else. This clone of me had two tails. Instead of my one. What the hell? How does he have two tails? Who is he Karama? Karama. The fox looked at me with sadness. I'm sorry Naruto. He said lowly, before glaring back at the clone, who had fire bouncing around in his hands, and he smiled, before stopping and looking at the dreaded blood moon filled sky. This was hell in my book. Happiness, you can leave his string out now. Trust me, you've had plenty of time. But I think it's my turn once more. I felt funny as I saw another me come out of my body. He looked weaker than the one standing before me. No, you've had way too much time, so many things broken. I am not allowing you the original or the string. Monster. I looked at the green-haired me before he turned to me. Crap. Was all he could make out before trying to rush back into me. I slung my fist at him, connecting into his face. What the heck is going on around here? Have I finally gone insane? I said grabbing my head, shaking about. I watched as the dark-haired one merely chuckled, and I heard Raven yelp at a surprise and turned around to see pink hair. Oh no, the hexing bitch. I screamed, readying a mental resangan. I only watched as a small child like me, like when I was with Aisarabi come out from behind Raven, who looked terrified. He looked at me, and then started crying. Don't choose darkness, he's not nice. Quipping he shook all over, I then noticed several others coming. One even surprising Raven which was a blue-haired one. Though he stood by the dark-haired one. Sadness, you dare take the side of anger. I heard one yell, and then the one known as Darkness chuckled. Yes, he does, because look who has the power to open Yamana, and yet you all drag so far behind. He then turned to me, take my hand. I hesitated, until Karama spoke up. You stay back from him, Yami Naruto. You are not meant for this time. I regulate you to the back of them all. Go away. You cannot command me, Lord Nine Tails. I am my own entity. I am him. He pointed at me. I made him strong. Dare you deny that? I watched all this madness go around, until I felt a hand on my back. It was Raven. Stand up for yourself. She drawled out. That's when I felt something else enter the dark forest. Except where it walked, it left flowers in its wake. Amidst the darkness, I felt it enter me, and slowly my heart started to beat faster. That's when I roared out. Shut up. Shut up. I watched as the clones of me, and Karama stopped fighting. Will one of you kindly screw ups, tell me what's wrong with this picture. I am not making clones, I am not commanding you. So which one of you screw ups is going to give me an answer? I looked down to see my hair was growing longer, and turning orange with the extra length. Nobility, Will's father. You seem, very, nourished. I growled out, as I felt something boil inside of me, and I shouted at the dark-haired one. Explain. We are emoticlones. I am of course the head of the emoticlones. I am the real you. Now take my hand. What are you? Were your emotions. What? I cannot believe this, and Karama. You knew, didn't you? I'm sorry, kid. Yes, be sorry, Lord Ninetales. After all you failed in making what he needs to be, an instrument of pure destruction, unlike the bitch over there. I heard Raven growl, before a blast of dark energy came past me. She launched one of her magic bolts at the darkness, who was encased inside of it. He merely chuckled, and phased through it, making her eyes widen, and mine as well. I growled as I still held the Rizangan, but I noticed the darkness formed two on his hands, and two behind his tails. I can give you so much power, Naruto. Ignore your master. Take my hand. Please, take my hand. Make mother proud. Wash away the memories, and their lives and blood like our innocence. My eyes widened, and then I glared hard. You loser, 
You are the one that's been causing these horrible dreams. You are the one who has sent me into this hell. I refuse you. I refute your claim over me. Be gone from my sight. The darkness merely chuckled. You yet have the power, God. I heard him lightly starting to shout before I saw Karama slam one of his claws into him. I watched his black blood spilled from his lips and slowly the fox demon lord pulled back. You, Raven, wake Naruto up. Keep him awake for the next two days. I am going to straighten this mess out. You have caused years worth of planning and crap to go down the drain. At least do me this favor. I looked towards Raven, who looked at the scene stunned. I felt her grab me, and then slowly we walked into a black portal. All the while, I heard the darkness scream at me. You cannot hold me back forever. I am you. I am you. There will be a time, you will need me, and I'll be waiting. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content. Click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.